Um, my name is Radni Priya. I was born in Motihari and I was raised in Bhopal from where I did my schooling. After that, I did my graduation from Chanakya National Law University and my master's from National Law School of India, University Bangalore. Uh, currently, I'm teaching as a guest faculty in Barkatullah University and I'm also pursuing PhD from Barkatullah University. I have an elder brother and my father and mother both are professor. Um, yes. Okay. Judge, do you want to say anything about Ma'am, everyone wants to serve the society in one way or the other and everyone does it in their own way. The reason for my inclination towards judicial services is that it gives the opportunity and the capacity as well to bring about the change and to, to serve the society. Um, and also, ma'am, of all these public services, judiciary is one which is most untainted. And it would be my honor to be associated with such an institute. Okay, and what was the purpose of posting masters and going for a PhD? Do you want academics as a B plan? Or you're aspiring for internal promotions and salary hike in judiciary? Oh, ma'am, I thought that the best decision after my post-graduation would be to pursue master's. Then uh, PhD, I would say that it happened coincidentally since there was a long gap um, from my master's till date. So I thought that instead of sitting idle, I should continue with my, master, with my higher education. So I got enrolled just a few days back because also, ma'am, my net GRF, it was for a period of three years. So it was ex it was about to expire on November, and I got enrolled in the month of October. So uh, it was incidental. What is the topic of research? Uh, ma'am, right now, uh, it, is, uh, it has not been confirmed in the RDC, but my proposed topic is uh, Rohingya crisis and antithesis to human rights. Have you worked on the hypothesis part? Actually, this topic was also my, the topic of my dissertation. So I thought of continuing it. Um, okay. So what was your hypothesis in your dissertation? Ma'am, uh, my hypothesis was that the situation and the circumstances to which Rohingya Muslims and also the other, post, or the other Rohingyas were subjected amounted to gross violation of human rights and also grave international crimes such as war crimes, genocide and crimes against humanity. Was it doctrinal in nature or empirical? I'm doctrinal. Yes, ma'am. Concluded? Um, I did conclude that uh, there was a gross violation of human rights and also other international crimes have also taken place. And there was a need to prosecute the Myanmar authorities. And ma'am, uh, since then, since 2019, there has been an advancement in this field also. Uh, the state of Gambia has filed a case against Myanmar authorities in November 2019 in ICJ. Uh, what is your area of interest in law? I have an inclination towards constitutional law. Constitutional law? Yes. All right. Can you tell me what is constitutionalism? So it is a philosophy that there should be limited governance, limited government. Uh, it restricts the unlimited power of, govern, of uh, government. All right. And uh, do you have any idea about doctrine of eclipse? It, uh, it can be associated with Article 13 of the Indian Constitution. It states that uh, a law which was valid and due to some amendment or change in law, it became void. Uh, if that law, the new law has been uh, revoked, then the previous law which was void will uh, become a valid law. So the, um, uh, how would I say that, uh, so the um, voidness, which was eclipsed has now been removed. All right. Is it applicable on uh, post-constitutional laws as well? Uh, no, sir. It is not applicable on post-constitutional law. Recently, in uh, 2010, there was a judgment, KM Puncha versus State of Karnataka. It was held that uh, it is not applicable to post-constitutional law because they are void ab initio. All right. So, doctrine of eclipse is not applicable in law. No, sir. All right. Any other landmark uh, judgment that you may be knowing about this? Um, the state of MP versus Pikaji Narayan was one uh, in which this concept was evolved. And um, I'm unable to recall any other. Okay, yes. okay. And what about doctrine of waiver? Yes, sir. It states, uh, doctrine of waiver, it states that a person can waive his or her fundamental right, but this is not applicable in India. Uh, yes, sir, that is doctrine of in India. Um, no, Any judgment on that? 
yes sir there was a judgment um i'm unable to recall the name sir you can tell me the reason and the thing that was held in the court in the case Yes, sir. It was held that the state is a welfare state in India, and uh, it would be unfair of the people to. It was unfair on the people because they might not be aware of their in, of their uh, fundamental rights. So it would be unfair of the state to apply this doctrine and ask people to waive their fundamental rights. Was it the majority judgment, or it was the minority opinion that was? I will read upon it, but I think it should be the majority because yes, sir, because it was held. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so you are also working as a guest faculty for law. Yes, sir. What all subjects do you teach? So right now, I'm teaching uh, law and social transformation to LLM students. All right. Before that, any other subject? In previous uh, semester, I taught uh, penology, treatment of offenders. Penology. All right. So, do you have any idea about expiatory theory of punishment? Yes, sir. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not able to recall it. Uh, I will surely sorry, study sorry. about it. Uh, do you think reformative theory is uh, relevant in present time? Uh, yes, sir. I think that in India there is an approach towards reformative theory because uh, if we compare with deterrence theory and reformative theory. Since twenty-five years, there have been only five executions uh, of death penalty, and uh, there have been multiple cases of commutation and remission in which the person has been asked to uh, reform. So these are in this way we can say that India is, uh, is moving towards reformative theory, and also so there have been many jail reforms, uh, like in Bihar jail. Um, Ms. Kiran Bedi, IPS officer Ms. Kiran Bedi, she uh, introduced the concept of edu educating the prisoners. So, in order to bring about a reform in their approach, and also she um, she asked them to meditate and to pray so that they could contemplate on what they have done. So that was uh, so we can say that India's approach is moving towards reformative theory. All right, all right, and uh, the critics of reformative theory says that it is not. of reformative theory they tend to move towards deference theory or retributive theory but sir in a advanced society an eye for an eye should not be the concept for which we should move towards rather we should understand that what was the circumstances what was the issue um, but the critic says that there are some hardcore criminals jinhe bat pata hai ki wo jo kar rahe hain sahi nahi फॉर Uh, provisions in law uh, in those cases these theories don't apply and uh, for uh, if i'm to also say that uh, in case of ajmal kasab like he was he we could be categorized as one person who did it knowingly so in that case he was hanged to death so deformative theory it does give an option that if there are hardened criminals in, in this uh, if there is no scope whatsoever of reformation then in that case uh, the other theories should apply उटरी try to improve with this one all right all right and uh, you have mentioned in your form that uh, you have a distinction in law of contract and property law as well can you tell me what is foreclosure and redemption yes sir uh, sir redemption is a right of mortgager person who has uh, mortgaged his property to discharge the property after payment of the mortgage money 
on the other hand foreclosure is the right of a mortgagee in which he can bar the this right of uh, redemption of the mortgager all right all right rajendra you have uh, done your graduation and post graduation from national universities and right now you are pursuing phd and taking your classes in a state university what differences you find between both the uh, classes of colleges ma'am if i'm being honest the quality of education it depends upon the student but the difference comes when it comes to uh, the quality of administration uh, in nlus uh, as a student i was never troubled for any mark sheet or for any document whatsoever but uh, in this state university there is one issue uh, many of my students approach me that they are not able to get appropriate uh, scholarship or appropriate documents at time and they have been troubled by it so the administrative um side is much more um, better is much better in uh, nlus and uh, also one issue that came was uh, in nlu we used to have a academic calendar and we used to follow it strictly in barkatullah university there is an academic calendar that is issued every year but people don't adhere to it there is always some of the other changes it it uh, somewhat harasses the student because they need to go back to their studies and uh, go back home also so uh, education uh, it's somewhat or the other same in both institutes but uh, the administrative side can be improved okay so haven't you tried ever for an national university to be a lecturer I'm actually uh, teaching was never an option for me. I I seriously don't have a plan B right now. Um, I had the opportunity of being taught by Honorable Justice uh, Rajendra Babu in National Law School of India University. He told me that during the initial five years, don't have a plan B because it would give you a scope of failing. Uh, so I did not have a plan B. The reason I got into teaching in Barkatullah University was uh, twofold. first is for uh, it is a temporary position and it only requires one hour of my time and it is very close to my home and secondly ma'am it gives me a financial independence because uh, at this point of time i do want some financial stability also because i need to fill forms and appear for exams so these were the reasons because of which i joined this university so uh, i don't have teaching in my mind right And you have done your masters in human rights. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me the difference between human rights and fundamental rights? Yes, ma'am. Human rights are those rights that are inherent to every human, irrespective of his caste, creed, uh, sex, gender, anything. Um, and hu- fundamental rights are the rights that are recognized by the constitution. Uh, so all those human rights that are recognized and protected by the constitution are fundamental rights. Can you tell me the difference between compensation and damages? Yes, ma'am. Can I take a minute? Sure. Um. I'm sorry, ma'am. I will read about it. Cannot think of anything. Anything? Uh, do you know about quantum merit? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um. it is one of the remedy that is available in case of breach of contract in this if one party has partly executed the contract on his behalf he will be compensated on the basis of that part which has been done for it so uh, on a pro rata basis he is compensated that is the concept of quantum merit okay. and have you heard about the case lesley versus shell and the indian contract act oh, yes ma'am Uh, lordship gave a statement that restitution stops where repayment begins in that case can you explain this yes ma'am uh, if i am allowed to uh, make an attempt i think uh, it was in relation to minor contract in this it was that uh, if we ask a minor to repay it stops where repayment now so it won't be restitution because now he is allowed he is being forced to repay the amount so the concept of restitution has stopped and the repayment has begun all right uh, you mentioned origami as your hobby what is that so it's a japanese technique in which uh, a person folds paper and they create uh, a different objects uh, what we have been uh, taught in art and craft in our school 
that is for all the young. Yes. And how is it? Uh, how is it helpful in your selection? So, uh, it gives me an a calmness uh, when I create something. It gives me a feeling that uh, uh, I have. It gives me a feeling of being of being a, a creator, in a sense. So, um, and also it helps me relax. Because when I'm very tense, I just tend to create some of the other things, some of the cute creatures. So it just relaxes me a bit. All right, all right. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Could have done uh, for simple questions like uh, compensation and damages. I literally froze that time. I don't know. <laughs> Even I cannot recall it right now. Also, and uh, I did write origami and jigsaw puzzle, but I did not think <laughs> how is it helpful. Yes. Uh, because and you have mentioned in a problem, yeah, yes, you have to change the subject. Yes, sir. So I need to function. Yeah, you need to think once. Suppose whatever you do makes you what you are today. मतलब सारी इस बात को दिमाग में लेके ही जाओ क्योंकि ऐसा होगा नहीं कि हर क्वेश्चन हमें एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम याद ही होगा या हमें आता ही होगा सो डोंट वरी अबाउट दैट ये बस ध्यान रखना कि उसकी वजह से अगले क्वेश्चंस पे इंपैक्ट ना इट्स ऑलरेडी ऐसा होगा कि मल्टीपल क्वेश्चंस होंगे कुछ आंसर्स हमें नहीं पता होंगे सो इट्स एब्सोल्युटली फाइन बाकी सारी चीजें मुझे अच्छी लगी कुछ ऐसा था नहीं ज्यादा व्हिच कैन बी इंप्रूव थैंक यू सो मच आई आल्सो हैव अ सिमिलर व्यू आई Like the all the things, but the approach to answer करने का, the way you are taking a hold if you want to think about it, and even if you are not aware, all is perfect. Or uh, knowledge wise, मैं मुझे अच्छा लगा है चार questions भी मेरे लिए satisfactory the answers. The only thing I want to tell is about the body language, the way you were sitting, because in that appropriate, you have to sit in a straight posture. You were inclined towards the table, so that was not proper. Of course, I relaxed over it, Jawar. उंड But I was posting it at that time. Your topic is not yet selected. But then also they may ask questions related to your topic. So or ये भी एक dissertation topic वही है. So they may ask questions and the level of questions were quite high. 
सो गो थ्रू दैट प्रॉपरली जो भी टॉपिक था उस रिलेटेड दो यू आर अवेयर अबाउट मैक्सिम ऑफ द थिंग्स बट जितने भी पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं प्राइमरी सोर्सेज सेकेंडरी सोर्सेज इवन दे कैन आस्क अबाउट द फूड नोटिंग्स एंड ऑल द कौन सा फॉर्मेट ले रहे हो आई लाइक और फॉलो कर रहे हो क्यों कर रहे हो सो ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन कैन ऑल्सो भी पुट सो गो थ्रू दैट थॉरली बिकॉज दे गेट रियली एनी कोर्स इज कोर्स इन पी एच डी इन अपेयरिंग फॉर द इंटरव्यू सो दे गेट अ सेपरेट सेगमेंट टू पुट अप क्वेश्चन सो प्रिपेयर दैट वेरी वेल Do you are aware about most of the questions? But I am just asking you that who be prospects for question. Yes, ma'am. Just cover them. Thank you.